Hello and welcome again everyone to my channel. Uh, thank you for coming back and you know keep watching my video. I appreciate that. Um, last time we hit 100,000 subscribers which is amazing. I really thank you guys for that and hopefully for the next you know goals we're gonna hit 1 million. Okay let's set that for as high as we can and let's, let's set that to a million subscribers. Um, and today, as you might know, as you might already know, uh, that I am an animation director and supervisor by trade. So that's my day job. That's my that's my occupation, or like sort of career, if you want to say. And today, I want to show you a little bit of a glimpse of what I usually do. You know, what animation is, what 3D animation. Because a lot of people are asking me, so if you are an animator, then what did you do? Like what sort of uh, contribution that you make in the movie and things like that. So I'm going to delve deep into a different departments in animation and not just animator, but there are lots of disciplines like modeling, there are texturing, rendering, lighting, and all those, uh, those stuff, all right? So first thing I do, uh, right now, I already have my software opens here. It's called Maya, Autodesk Maya. So we operate primarily within this software, within this Maya software, as you can see. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty powerful as a software, and a lot of big studios, a lot of feature studios are actually using this software to animate on their movies. So this is the software that you need to watch for if you want to learn animation. I suggest to start with Maya because it's the most common and the most widely used software in every studio. All right, don't get don't get me wrong. Software is not really important. There are lots of softwares that you can use, like 3D Max. There are Blender and Unreal Engine now that you can animate straight from that software but for the sake of this demonstration I would go with Maya something that I'm already familiar with something that I've used my entire life you know not my entire life but you know, the, my whole for the span of my whole my whole career all right and yeah okay without further ado let's delve right into it um, first thing I just want to set out set up this tour box that I have I don't know if you guys can see it um, but it's this little thing right here that I use, you know, to uh, operate my software. So within these buttons, I can immediately, without having to scrub my timeline or anything, I can just like press a button and it can already play the timeline for me. And or if I can press another button, it will stop the animation for me. And I already set up. Uh, one of the down buttons like the d-pads so with the bottom ones if I press it I can immediately uh, assign anything that I want within this software so I set it for alt key in the keyboard alt button in the keyboard so you can customize it anyhow you want and you can move around things like that well, if if you press alt here on the deep on the keyboard you can functionally do the same thing you can um, move it you can move it around you can uh, like do this but you can even zoom in things like that so there are lots of things that you can do within this toolbox all right so what is 3d animation you might ask um, 3d animation is something that is similar to what you've seen in 2d traditional way which is people are going to draw things frame by frame to create emotion, you know, the illusion of life, they call it. So uh, what it does is actually create one set of frame for every movement to create a smooth, you know, that one drop of hand, for example. So you create one frame, a second frame, third frame, fourth frame, five frame, and so on. So you create that one singular motion that you can play within this within these keyframes. And the first thing you notice is this thing right here, which is our model. So there are lots of people who made this model. I certainly did not make this model. This was made by somebody who are more professional or like 
uh, specialize in modeling. You know, when you started out as uh, as an artist, of course you have to understand everything called uh, discipline. You have to know how to model it. You have to know how to rig it. Rigging is something that is uh, some sort of like bones underneath. If you if you take a look here, you know this thing is called a puppet or a model a 3d model as you might might know and you can rotate the model just like a puppet in real life you can mold it you can move it around things like that but instead of a puppet like an actual model you use the model inside the software inside the 3d, 3D software 3d package as, as some people might say and then underneath it you have this rig like a skeleton on under the model that you can move around as you can see here on my uh, camera here let me just make it better for you so you can see my model here yeah there you go there are all sorts of things that is dri driven that is driving the character all right so right now you see that I'm moving Bumblebee's hand right here. So this is this is the rig that you can control. There are lots of things that you can control. For example, fingers here that you can rotate and move around and such. But there are also spine here that you can move around that you can do to either make your you know, your puppet moves up and down, uh, the head rotations here, as you can see. So these are individual controls that you use, that you utilize to uh, make your model come to life, all right? And that's the animator's job, to create a believable, um, lifelike animations, or lifelike movements, sets of movements that makes it real, all right? So that's the first introduction to animation, basically. If you can see here, you can start moving the leg as such. And you gotta be careful as an animator because you cannot just like move them without thinking, without a plan, without planning. You cannot just, okay, I'm gonna do animation. I'm just gonna make him walk. And I'm just gonna do this and that and all that sort of stuff. It doesn't work that way, okay? You have to understand the basics the fundamentals and the foundation what makes a good animation which is gonna be in the illusion of life book by i think it was made by frank and ollie ollie johnson and so there are books that you can read to understand more about animation which is uh, this is one of the great books that all of the animator needs to is to see it's called the illusion of life by uh, Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnston. Okay, so Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnston is the old one of the uh, nine old men from Disney, and they were the pioneer of animation uh, in the 80s or something like that. And this book fulls of wisdom how you can animate, how you can make a drawing comes to life, uh, and things like that. If you uh, want to check out one of their stuff, such as this one. So every frame is a drawing that consists of motion, that consists of poses that when you play it, it will create that illusion of life, all right? So one of the great books that you have to read in your lifetime if you are an aspiring artist or an animator, this is a must read. You cannot skip this one. So let's get back to it, okay? And from here, as, as I mentioned, you can play around with your model you can move them around and things like that and then you create a set of keyframes that you set let's say you want to make Bumblebee move forward like that and then you can make Bumblebee want you know jump or things like that and you can definitely like I said I can use this toolbox to play it as you can see or I can use this knobs to move back and forth with just a touch of my finger right here so this is how I normally work I use this toolbox to set my keyframes you know for example here I want to make 
can dip down a little bit before you know from his normal positions and dip down and then go up and then he jumps like that such right but of course the computer doesn't know what you want the computer only fills in the blank for you but it's ultimately up to you how you want to move this character how you want to make it believable and uh, more precise if you want to uh, if you want to put it in blunt so something like this is something that we deal with every single day. You move the arms around, uh, set the keyframe here, and then you move the arms up before, you know, like create that anticipation before that big jump. And then when it goes that down, you move the arm down just as so. So it's a lot of, it's very tedious work. It's very tedious work because you have to set the pose every single time you move every single time the character do things because otherwise it will look broken obviously it's gonna look weird and broken and all that so you have to be very precise where you want the character to be where you want a certain limbs or controls uh, you can even set this the elbows you know going left and right and then the head make sure it's looking where you were going for example for now it's going to be looking forward and then you're going to do a little take before jumping a little delay because the weight shift the weight shift different and then you go up looking where Bumblebee is actually going something like that so that's how you create an animation all right this is just the basic and I'm going to show you a little something uh, that is intriguing, which is a graph graphic editor. I don't know if you can see it from there, but graph editor, it's a set of it's a set of graph that you use or manipulate to make sure like the character is moving if you change the graph. Like, going up or down so it has translation it has rotations it has a lot of different things that you can actually that you can actually manipulate so it has rotations it has translations and when you want to do that you know as you can see when as you are manipulating the graph you are also manipulating the puppet right and this is one of the examples uh, that I make. So I already... All right, so I have this animation open, right? And what I usually do is set up my my layout in a, in a way that I can work with three different monitor, three different sets of monitors, all right? So what I normally do is this one to animate because it has a lot of information that I can move around in, the, in my scene, in my viewport, they call it. I can move around, I can select my character from here. I can do a lot of things, you know, like select that character or if I want to move him around. But the top one will be my camera, okay? This is going to be a set camera that you cannot touch, that you don't move around. You just there as a final representation of what you're going to see on the big screen but in this viewport you can zoom in you can move them around whatever you want and the other one is the graph editor where you have this uh, it might look complicated in the beginning as you can see it has a lot of information that you might not understand but eventually you will learn to love it because this is where your animation lives right and like i said before it's a tedious work there are lots of things and consideration that you take for each single frame and one second of movie it consists of 24 frames so just imagine how much how many frames that you've got to work for a whole two hours movie that's why there there are no one animator in one movie there are hundreds of them more right Usually in a big budget movie, there will be around 30 animators, 40 animators, 
for animated feature like Disney or Pixar, there's going to be hundreds. With visual effects, there's probably somewhere around 20 or 30 animators, and that's enough because live action, you only work on the uh, VFX side of it, but full length feature, full length animation um, for the whole two hours long, that's everything is animation. So there are lots more, a lot more animators involved in feature. But yeah, as you as you might see here, um, if I play the animation, you can you can start to see that you know you can see Bumblebee working here. Uh, I'm going to open my camera sequencer. This is where our animation lives. Sorry, our sequence lives. So if I play from here, if I play from my camera sequencer from here, you can start seeing that, you know, this is basically what I do. Uh, to create that sort of animation, all right? And yeah, I mean, also beside that, as you can see here, I have a reference reference that I already shot here on the top monitor it's a reference that I shot of myself performing this kind of action as you can see because reference is very important it's not about rotoscoping or not about tracing the movement it's more about finding out the key points like the weight where the weight was distributed like what my hands are doing during that moment uh, where my head or like where I'm facing where my torso should lead and things like that so that's uh, the importance of understanding your reference before you do anything in your animation right so with this you can start to see that I'm really doing it for real before doing anything with, with my software Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty intricate and complicated process, but once you understand uh, why it does what it does, you sort of, you know, play around with it. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun, I would say, uh, being an animator because you get to work on a lot of great movies that you grew up with, you know, something cool, something that you, you always find it fascinating. So it's always a dream of mine to be able to work in games, cinematic, or movies, Disney, Disney stuff, Pixar, whatever you call it. Because I just want to channel my creativity, and I just can I can see something moving in my head without actually seeing it. That's why I have to channel it. That's why I become an animator. Animator is a person who are very critical and very analytical in everyday life. So whenever you see everything's moving, as an animator, you always constantly, you know, observing everything, how things move, how a certain things do what it does, the weight of a certain object, how character walks, what kind of personality that they put out, and things like that. So yeah, this is just a tip of the iceberg you know I only show you the body mechanics but I have a lot of shot where the character have to emote where the character have to sort of speak sort of having a dialogue with the other person and that's where your acting chops really comes in handy right because I'm gonna pull out one of my one of my reel here so I have this acting I don't that I do so Basically, yeah, that's hard. she's really terrific, though. Yeah, she is. What a beautiful person. I mean, not only on the outside, but she really has an inner beauty, don't you think? So, I, I mean, yeah, I don't really know what you see. Yeah, this is just something that, as you can see, I'm I'm shooting myself here, right? And this is my reference when I'm acting, and I'm just gonna let you guys watch it for now. I mean, yeah. She's really terrific though. Yeah, she is. What a beautiful person. I mean, not only on the outside, but she really has an inner beauty, don't you think? 
So yeah, that's 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 about it. You know, it's all about creating a performance from your own acting chop and translate it into the three D characters that you are animating, basically. And this takes practice because not a lot of people are comfortable in front of camera. So a lot of a lot of great animators they come from a very timid person, a very shy person, and introverted sometimes. But they get to overcome that fear uh, to make their craft better. So they have to get rid of their fear and just be comfortable in front of camera to shoot themselves as an actor. You know, just like Leonardo DiCaprio, just like everybody else, like Jack Gyllenhaal or like any great, like Daniel Day-Lewis, you know, Denzel Washington, whatever you want to call it, great actors nowadays or Robert Downey Jr. It's the acting chops that makes your animation stands out. If you have a believable performance, if you have a believable acting, you know, as a person, then it will translate to the big screen as authentic as your acting is. All right, so animation is a, a part of you, a part of who you are. So whenever you see a character on Pixar movies or Disney movies or Fear Facts even, that's a glimpse of uh, a part of the animator's life or a part, at least a part of the animator's experience and acting chops, you know what I mean? So yeah, I mean, I, I've done a lot of, lot of animations such as Monsters at Work, I've done Street Fighters, I've done uh, visual fact shots like Maleficent, for example. Sonic the Hedgehog and also like a little dragon a character like this where the character gets to gets to emote and you know this Mike Wazowski like some of the biggest IP But it all stems from you. It all stems from your acting, from your experience, how you feel life, and how would you deliver that dialogue if you were him, if you were Mike Wazowski, right? You have to imagine that in your head. And that's the best thing about animation, in my opinion, because you get to imbue that character. You get to be that character for a day, at least, or for the whole span of you animating that character. Some movies can last you a year, so you become that character for a whole year. That's almost the same process as becoming an actor, right? You become that character for a year, and then you start to understand how, the, how that character behaves, how Mike Wazowski behaves, what kind of jokes that he might put out, like what kind of movement that he might do. He might do this, or he might like cross his arm, but that, it's that demeanor that you're trying to uh, imbue to that character that you're animating, right? So a lot of this stuff, like Tyler, for example, it has to be a blip. It has to be blip. So this is me shooting my own face, like my own reference, and just act it out, like acting how you normally be disappointed, you know, and feeling sad and things like that. Um, like this is one of the other example where I have to really act shy, but then excited because you're about to hop this you know most wonderful person you ever met in your life and it comes from your heart you know it comes from within you and that's how what what makes a great animation it what comes from within your heart yeah I've been I've been really fortunate to be able to animate a lot of great um, a lot of great movies a lot of great games in my life you know, one of them, one of them is this Street Fighter that I that I animate like in 2015 or something. This is the stuff that really, really, you know, it's a dream come true for me because this is the stuff that I grew up with, and eventually I get to animate on on the stuff that I dream about, basically that I play as a child. And now I get to be here. I get to uh, I get to be a part of this amazing, amazing game, amazing project. So 
it's it's a dream come true for me and i'm really grateful to have what i have i need to be constantly reminded how how fortunate i am and how lucky i am to be able to do this as a career as a job and people paying you to do what you like to do you know it's basically your hobby even though you know i've been i've been doing this for i think 17 years now i've been doing animation for 17 years now and it's sort of become a job rather than a hobby but you have to constantly remind yourself that you know no matter what ultimately you're doing what you love to do so this is what you love to do even though it's hard some at times where you have to deal with a lot of directors that are difficult or a client or like the project standard is so high like very high that you don't have time for anything else but ultimately like Brad Bird always said or like Walt Disney always said I don't know is it Steven Spielberg no I don't know I'm not sure but pain is temporary but movies film is forever okay so keep that in mind pain is temporary but film is forever there you go because your life will be forever lived in these games in these movies whatever you've been working in your whole life you can be proud to call yourself hey, i work on this movie yeah i've been uh, i've been involved in maleficent and disney for example things like that so you get to be proud of who you are and i think that's that's saying something even i won uh, something that i never never imagined in my in my whole life never have i <laughs> ever to imagine that I get to receive never have I ever to imagine that I will be someday get an Emmy award like Emmy nomination or even win an award which is an Emmy daytime Emmy awards for the Dragon Prince which is um, this one right here the Dragon Prince right so yeah I have this play behind me just to sort of I just want to say it, just to sort of uh, commemorate and remind myself why I'm doing this for. As you can see, this is the uh, Emmy Awards that I get from the Dragon Prince. So I have it hang on my walls right there. And so it just reminds me how fortunate I am and how far I've been, you know, in my journey, in my long journey in this career that I have to always be grateful for all right so yeah that's just a little glimpse of what I'm doing uh, my career and what my day job is my occupation as you might say uh, beside YouTube obviously and beside all of my other hobbies but ultimately it comes down to this and yeah I mean thank you again for listening to this to this day video and hopefully you find this video you find this informational for you you find this to be helpful for any aspiring animators who wants to become you know like me or who wants to pursue this art form hopefully this kind of, this can also inspire you if you want to work on movies if you want to work with disney and pixar and things like that so thank you again thank you again for listening and i'll see you guys in the next video if you have any question don't forget to hit the comment sections don't forget to also hit like and subscribe button if you haven't just so that you can uh, get a recent update whatever whenever i upload new video for you and things like that so yeah all right thank you again and i hope you guys have a great day ahead and see you next time bye